Around town. Join host Marita McKinnon as she travels around town interviewing local businesses in the greater Boston area. Whether you're on the North Shore, the South Shore, or even down the Cape, Marita has it covered. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and tune in now as Marita takes you around town. Hello and welcome to the program Around Town. My name is Marita McKinnon and this is the program where we travel really in and around the greater Boston area, whether it's on the North Shore, the South Shore, really anywhere in between Boston as well. So today on the program, I am joined with Dr. Shagun Ige, and he is of the Anike Foundation. He is the president of that foundation, and we have him on the program today to talk to us really about that foundation and what it does. But first, I want to welcome you to the program. How's it going? Uh, Thank you, Marisa. Nice to be here. It's great to have you. So let's start with the question, what prompted you to start this nonprofit foundation, you know, what did you actually do to accomplish it and how did you make it all possible? Okay, uh, good question, uh, Marita. Thanks again for having us. Uh, Anike Foundation is an organization that is devoted to promoting education in Africa. Mm-hmm. That is our mission, is what we're focused on. The mission started actually, you might say, decades ago. I happen to be, I was born and raised uh, in Nigeria, in, uh, in Africa, and then I went to school in Britain before I came to the United States for graduate studies. And one of the things I observed during those uh, days when I was a student, I used to go back on vacation, mm-hmm. you know, at home. I would always notice the disparity in education opportunities mm. for Africans versus what existed where I was going to school in the U.S. And it's, it was always a source of pain for me. Mm-hmm. And I always would wring my hands, what can you do? I would usually go through a, a period of depression, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when I went back home and then I come back. And then on one occasion, uh, when I went back to Nigeria on, uh, on vacation, I just remember something happened. My mother uh, had gone through a lot of my stuff because I hadn't been home for a long time. Mm -hmm. She put all my books, all dating back to my elementary school days, organized them, and I was just overwhelmed. And that's when you might say I went through an epiphany Mm -hmm. in the sense that I just thought to myself, this lady has done so much for me. Without her, I would not be where I was today. What other way could I honor her than to start a foundation that will give education to other Africans. Mm. And that was how I came around. Her name, by the way, is Anike. Oh, that's and lovely. That's, and that's how the foundation uh, started. Wow, what a and great story. S- thank you. And so when I returned uh, to the United States, I immediately set about uh, look, doing research on how to uh, found an organization, a 501c3 organization, So that took probably a year or so. And uh, within, you know, it was 1997 that we finally got incorporated as a Massachusetts nonprofit foundation and, uh, you know, accepted by IRS uh, as a nonprofit. So that's how we came into being. Nice. Well, what a passionate story that is. Of course, it's something that's so dear to your heart in so many ways, and you're very passionate about developing education in Africa. So let's talk about the ways that you make that happen. How do you go about raising the funds? You know, how do you go about making it possible? Okay. The, uh, now, as I mentioned, I started this as a thought idea. When I got into, uh, into starting this, I realized that it was going to take a lot to do. And part of the reason, you know, why I had the impetus to actually do this was that in my line of, in my regular work, I'm an engineer by training. Mm -hmm. Uh, But as an engineer, as you grow, you become manager, you know, you manage programs. And I was lucky enough to have been chosen to manage a very sophisticated program uh, that we did 
uh, you know, for the government, uh, it was a $100 million program. Mm. And I managed the entire program. And so the experience I had in doing this program, in managing that program, gave me the, the, the kind of strength of will, you might say, that I could launch an organization and manage it myself. Without that, I would not have been able to do that. And so that's how I got into it. And then in terms of how we do things, I also realized, again, from my business background, that you have to keep your mission simple. If you make it too complicated, you, you can't get your arm around it. Mm. And so our mission is very simple. Uh, education in Africa is very poor. Education in developed countries is very good. What can we do to bridge the gap between these two? And we came up with, very simply, move materials from where they are plenty and abundant, move them to where they are not. So it's very, very simplistic. Now, actually getting to do it uh, is a different uh, uh, question. And back to your question, how do we really do it? We uh, move books, computers, laptops, educational materials, we move them uh, and transfer them to organizations uh, in Africa. Now, it's not as simple as I just said, mm. because moving things from the U.S. Yeah, or from any developed country, for that matter, to Africa is very expensive. Yeah. And so that's one of our challenges is shipping. Sometimes we have materials and it costs a lot to ship them. And so we are, we are multifaceted. We don't just do things one way. One of the things we found is that one of the things that separates us from well-established organizations that do similar things to us, I mean, they are much bigger organizations. I mean, we're talking of, uh, you know, billion-dollar operations. These organizations are humongous, but we are not, we, you know, we are very small. So we realized we have to do something unique in order to make our organization effective because we don't have the wherewithal of those organizations or the money that they have. And so one of the primary elements that we rely on is forming strong partnerships with grassroots African nonprofit organizations. They call them NGOs, meaning non-government organizations. And the reason this works for us is that these organizations already have the infrastructure in place for getting things done. So our mode of operation is seek out organizations, grassroots African organizations, whose mission and objectives are aligned with ours, form partnerships with them. And by so doing, it makes it easy for us to uh, either move materials to them, because many of them have representatives in the U.S. who will act on their behalf. So right now, uh, we have more than 130 partner organizations in Africa in 20 countries. Wow. So we are spreading like wildfire. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and that's what uh, allows us to accomplish what we are accomplishing, despite the fact that we don't have all the resources that uh, large organizations do. Wow. And there's so much that goes into it. And as you mentioned, that I understand shipping can be so expensive. You don't even realize how expensive shipping is. And you think, oh, yeah, I'm just sending this one thing. It can't be that much. And then you're like, oh, my goodness, how how did it get so expensive? Mm -hmm. So talk to me and the listeners about some of the other challenges that maybe you face. Okay. The uh, other challenge uh, when you uh, live in terms of how we do in Africa, the other challenge is resources to get things done here. Mm. And again, because we don't have a lot of donations from large corporations yet. We're hoping that will happen, uh, you know, soon. Of course. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, we rely on small donations from, uh, uh, you know, from families and friends. But even these days, we're attracting attention from all over the world. And so that, uh, that is helping us. But uh, in terms of that, the way we are getting things done in the human resource aspect is we rely a lot on volunteers. We have, in fact, uh, when I look at, we have two pillars in our organization that I say, if any one of them crumbles, we are out. So two pillars. One is the partnerships. The other is a volunteer base. Okay. We have a volunteer base. Right now, we are about 30, 30 volunteers, and they are located all over the globe. Wow. Now, 
there is actually a secondary benefit we get from the volunteer base, mm-hmm. which is that keep in mind, part of what we believe in is that people are the same all over the world. They want the same thing. So Africans too want good education for their children. Mm-hmm. And so by having a partnership base that is uh, across the globe, we are trying to bring the world together. Mm-hmm. So we have, you know, we, we've got uh, volunteers from, uh, uh, from Ireland. We've got volunteers from Paris. Uh, of course, we got in the U.S., you know, uh, of course, in Africa too. But we are spread all over the world. And these people have come from different backgrounds and yet they all share one common belief, which is we want to build a better world by giving education to Africa. And so the volunteer base is, uh, is one of the strengths that we have. It's also a challenge because, you know, volunteers, you know, sometimes their terms of service, you know, is short, and mm-hmm. then you have to work with that, and yeah. then managing them. So those are the challenges. But uh, to a large extent, we've derived a lot of benefits from uh, using volunteers from all over the globe. And that's amazing because, as you mentioned, all different areas of the globe really becoming unified, having that same goal in mind. And, you know, such diversity, different backgrounds, different upbringings, but having one goal in mind. And speaking of volunteers, how can you get involved? How can somebody listening to this program right now, they're thinking, I would love to help out. I would love to volunteer. How can they go about doing that? Oh, that's a very good question. There are several ways they could do that. They could go to our website, which is uh, uh, anikefoundation.org. So anike is spelled A-N-I-K-E, foundation. It's a single word, dot O-R-G. And there they can fill a contact in form uh, to send to us. Or they can also send us email uh, directly to contact at anikefoundation.org. Nice. And I want to remind our listeners right now that you're listening to the Around Town program. And today we have been talking with Dr. Shagun, and he is the president of the Anike Foundation. At this time, we're going to take a short break, actually. But when we come back, we're going to pick back up where we left off with Dr. Shagun talking about the Anike Foundation. AM 950 WROL, the spirit of Austin. Salem Media Group Boston, changing the spiritual climate of New England one listener at a time. My name is Mary Ann Miner, and I live down the Cape here in Orleans. I'm a great fan of WECE and WROL. You had some amazing Christian groups and churches, and I called to tell you how much I love the book that Pastor Bill Brace sent to me at no charge. And another beautiful thing happened this week. I called Joan Hunt, and they sent me a beautiful booklet on boundaries and that was great thank you again for your wonderful radio group you are so special to all of us so i thank you am 950 wrol the spirit of boston and 590 the word w-e-z-e and don't forget you can listen online anytime from cape cod to cape canaveral florida to cape town south africa we've got you covered worldwide on wezradio.com or wrolradio.com and thanks for listening you heard what the entire buzz is in Boston lately? Prager, Gallagher, Medved, Hewitt, Metaxas, Brinker, Lucia, Walmsley, and Gunderson. Tune in to Boston's newest station for talk, business, and news at our sister station. All day and all night. AM 1260, The Buzz. AM 1260, TheBuzz.com. From Salem Media Group. Why is a Christian education important? They're just getting such a more rich educational experience. They push you to answer the question, why? I wanted their Christian worldview to be integrated in every subject, in mathematics, in history, in literature, in biology, in sciences. If you live south of Boston and have been longing to send your student to a Christian or Catholic school, it's now more affordable than ever. Introducing our half-price tuitions. Now, you can send your child to a solid Christ-centered school for one full year at half price. Schools like Quincy Catholic Academy, the New Testament Christian School in Plymouth, St. Jerome School, Weymouth, New Testament Christian School, Norton, Our Lady of Lourdes School, Taunton, South Boston Catholic Academy, Norwood Christian Preschool, and Boston Baptist College on the Milton Boston Line. Call Pat Ryan at 617-691-2521 or email her at patr at salemradioboston.com. There is no 
better deal in town than what is offered with this discount tuition program. I love the program, and I want to be a part of this. WROL Boston. Welcome back to the Around Town program. My name is Marita McKinnon. Today, I have been talking with Dr. Shagun Ige of the Anike Foundation. And we've had a great conversation thus far talking about the importance of what the foundation does and really providing that education to those in need in Africa. So let's pick back up where we left off before the commercial break. So let's talk about some of the different success stories or anything that comes to mind where, you know, there's a story that you heard about and how you affected some of the education in Africa. Is there anything that you would like to share about maybe some positive testimonials, if you will? Okay. As I mentioned before, we uh, try to get materials from the U.S. primarily and ship them to our partners in Africa. There is one partner that has been a really shining light uh, among our partners. Not all partners are the same. Their name is Yokofoba. Yokofoba is a short in uh, French for Youth uh, Forum. They are really a very dynamic organization. They are one of the earliest partners uh, partnerships uh, that we formed. And this, they are based in Cameroon. And working with them, we established an IT center. And we ship them some computers, you know, and uh, some laptops. And they set this up and started to train uh, some of the Cameroonians in their neighborhoods uh, in this area. So that's one uh, success uh, story that we have. Now, I will give you another that is not typical, you might say, of what you say we, we will do. So we formed a partnership with another, it's actually a school. It's called Manyi uh, Parents uh, School. It's in Uganda. And so we formed pan- a partnership with them. And then we said, well, now we have a partnership. Uh, what kind of resource would you like from us? And uh, the headmaster, he said, well, you know what we really need most is a latrine for our folks. And, and I'm saying, well, latrine, we don't usually do that kind of thing. But then I said to myself, if they don't have good toilet facilities, how are they going to learn? And so, you know, we made up our mind that we were going to build a latrine facility for this school. And that's what we did. Nice. And that facility is there, and they are very uh, grateful for what, uh, what we did for them. So, you know, that's not... That, that is out of the norm, but my point is that we want to do anything that will facilitate education for the, uh, for the folks that we are trying to help. Absolutely, and you really give where it's needed to make that possible, just in the story that you just shared with our listeners. And a really big part of this is some of the donations, of course. Now, I want to ask you, where and how can people make donations to the Anike Foundation? So in terms of donations, again, the best place to donate to us is on our website, which again is uh, anikefoundation.org. Now, in lieu of that, they can mail, even on the website, they will see an address, they can mail, uh, mail it. So our address is P.O. Box 435, that's 435, and that is in West Boylston, West Boylston uh, 01583. So they could mail checks to us or they could go directly to the uh, foundation. In fact, uh, if they forget our web address, they can just Google Anike Foundation and it will take them to our web uh, website and there they will uh, find all the information they need. They can uh, donate by PayPal. Uh, they can also donate by any credit card that they want. Fantastic. So those are the best ways. Fantastic. And I'm glad that you mentioned the different ways that they can donate, too, for any of our listeners out there who are wondering the different ways that they can donate to the Nikkei Foundation. So before I let you go today, I want to ask you, is there anything that you would really like the listeners to take away from the Nikkei Foundation? Something that you would like to share with them in, of course, the importance of this and just something that you would like to leave the audience with or the listening audience, I should say. We've been talking about our goal in Anike Foundation is primarily to enhance education where it is not as good. You know, people might ask us, why focus on Africa? Why, why Africa? So let me answer that question. 
when you look at the statistics in terms of literacy around the world, Africa just stands out. It's just mind-boggling. I'll give you some, some numbers. Over 200 adults, that's one in three adults, cannot read or write. Over 50 million youths are not uh, in school. So when you look at statistics like that, uh, and this, the numbers I just gave you are in sub-Saharan Africa. It's even bigger for the entire continent, but that is really where the problem is. So the question, to, you know, uh, any of your audience or listeners who might be uh, asking the question, why should I worry about Africa? The reason is that Africa needs the most. It's the one that has the biggest need in terms of education. And then the second, uh, secondary reason is this, is that the world is becoming global. It's becoming global. And in fact, we would not have been able to do what we are doing without a global world. And the more we can help other people in Africa to come along with the world, we can help to reduce not just poverty over there, but, you know, I always tell people that uh, we and at, at Anike Foundation, we are not really a humanitarian organization. We, we don't donate blankets. You know, that's not our mission. We are trying to attack the problem of poverty from the root because we believe, you know, the best way to get rid of, or, or at least not, maybe not, you not get rid completely, but at least reduce poverty considerably is by bringing up the level of education of people. Now, why somebody, uh, your listeners might ask, why should I in the United States care? Now, if the person is not concerned for humanitarian reasons, one of the things I like to let people know is that we hear things about extremism these days. Mm. You know, extremism, whether it's in religion, uh, religious extremism, people doing uh, dastardly act, violence against people. When you dig deep down underneath what many of these uh, happenings, you will find that illiteracy is at the core of what causes this thing to happen. Mm. Because, you see, my background is in Nigeria. Uh, in Nigeria, we have different types of religion. Mm -hmm. I am a Christian. I was raised a Christian. But I also lived with Muslims. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I have first-hand knowledge of how when there is little literacy, people, when people don't have uh, knowledge, if you tell them anything, they are ready to believe. That's the problem. So it is in our interest, if we want to reduce the incidence of violence, and the violence, of course, comes back to us here, we need to do more to help the people so that they have knowledge. And so if somebody tells them, you know, if you kill so many uh, Christians, you're going to go to heaven. They will say, no, that's not correct, because they know. So knowledge is power, as uh, Nelson Mandela said. So that's the message I want to, uh, your listener to go with, is that this problem is not just unique. The world is tied together. If we don't help those people come up with us, in the end, we also will pay for it. And so it is in our interest to help uh, those people who need uh, education. Well, amen. That's that's a very powerful statement right there. Knowledge is power. I agree. That's something that is so profound. And I'm glad that you said that to our listeners and really digging in deep there, really what goes on and how that illiteracy can, of course, be a bigger global problem. So, wow. I just want to say thank you for sharing that today on Around Town. And before I let you go, remind our listeners, what's the best way to contact you? One more time. Yes. So the best way to contact us is via our email, which is contact at anikefoundation.org. Now, if they want to contact us uh, by phone, I'll give you uh, my phone number. Uh, it's 978-540-1511. That's 978-540-1511. Uh, that will, uh, they, they can reach me directly through that phone number. Fantastic. Well, I want to say thank you again, Dr. Shagun Ige. It's been just fabulous having you on the program today, talking to our listeners about what the Anike Foundation does and how you are making a difference with it. So I want to say thank you for coming on the program today and sharing with our listeners. 
Thank you, Marita. It's been a pleasure uh, being here. We really appreciate the opportunity you've given us. The pleasure is ours. Thank you. This has been another edition of Around Town. And if you somehow missed any of the information or contact information or you'd like to be reminded, you can also give us a call here at the radio station. And we'd be more than happy to direct you to their website, their telephone number, and the best way to contact them. Well, until next time, this has been another edition of Around Town. Have a great day. Thank you for traveling with us around town. Join Marita every Saturday morning from 8 to 8.30 a.m. right here on WROL 950 a.m., the spirit of Boston.